Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. We have the side panels cut to size. We have the side panels cut to size, plain, squared up. We still have to cut the mortises, but before we do that, we need to rip out the cross pieces. Then we have to plane those and square the ends. Once we have those in hand, we can use those to lay out the, the mortises for the cross pieces. It's all one step after the other. That's nice.
Side panel is completed. Side panel is roughed out, squared up. Still have to cut the notches. I'm progressing along with the saw till, and I need to cut up this piece of poplar. I want to make it into two pieces, one two inch wide and one inch and three eighths. People that I talk to about using hand saws say it's too hard. They can't cut a straight line. Well, actually, it's not as hard as you would think. If your saw is set up correctly, cutting a straight line is pretty much a given. Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Still working on the saw till, and I have cross pieces to cut today. First thing I needed to do is rip them. I bought a piece of poplar that's about three and a half inches wide and I want to make uh, two boards out of it. One two inches wide and the other one about an inch and three eighths. And I say about because it can go one way or the other. I'm at the point where I'm cutting this down before I make the mortises that fit into it. Rule number one, make your boards first before you cut the mortise. You can always make this a certain size and then fit the mortise to it. If you go the other way, the only thing this can do is get smaller. It can't ever get bigger. So we're going to try ripping this down and see if we can't get it to a size that I, I really want it to be. Now the thing that people tell me about ripping, they say it's very difficult to make a straight line. When you're using a circular saw, a circular saw cuts with the front edge and the back edge. And it's a circular saw, so that as the blade is going around, it's uh, powered, it's, it's always cutting. So as you're running a circular saw, you can wander that saw back and forth down that cut. When you're using a standard rip saw, like this distant D8 with a thumb hole, this blade is about five inches across right here. And it's about 45 thousandths thick. So for this blade to turn, I have a slot that's 15 thousandths wider than 45 thousandths, about 60 thousandths. That's the curve that I'm making. So I have to bend this five inches in 60 thousandths to make that turn. Now it'll do it. If you crank on it hard, it'll do it. But if you just let the saw run in the slot, it wants to cut straight. You have to watch where you're starting, get your line started straight, and then stay with it. If your saw is crooked, the teeth are dull, the set is wrong, you'll have a problem. But if you have a well-set saw with sharp teeth and a straight blade, it wants to cut a straight line. Now the way I like to make a, a line on a part that I'm going to be cutting is I use a marking gauge. These are simple little devices that you can pick up uh, either at a nearly new store or you can buy them brand new on the internet. They should run you no more than 10 bucks. If you're paying more than $10, you're probably paying too much for what we're going to be doing. Of course, there's collectible ones and there's all kinds of different ones, but the one I'm looking for is the one that works. It's a simple beam in a block. The beam is adjustable. This one has a scale on the side of it. Not all of them do. You don't need a scale on the side of it. You can set it with a hand rule. I'm going to cut this board two inches wide. So I take my hand rule and I set, see where that sharp edge is? I set that sharp edge against the two inch mark and then I just slide it up there tighten down the screw. That's going to give me a two inch wide cut. Now 
Now when you're using a marking gauge, you're not trying to cut the board with it. You're just making a line. And the first line you make is the one that it wants to follow. So if you go back over it, it's going to follow the same line again. If the first line is wobbly all over the place, you're going to have a hard time correcting it. So go slowly and don't press hard. It doesn't take a lot to scribe a line. Now since what I'm after is I want to have a line that I can see, that little scribe line is hard to see. You can go back over it again if you want to, but all that's going to do is make it a little bit deeper. If you pick up the line and run a pencil line down it, the pencil wants to follow that line that is cut. And that will make a nice, straight, solid mark down the length of the board. And you're going to veer off a little bit. Everybody makes mistakes. If you make a mistake, go back and fix it. Now I have that set to cut a two inch wide strip and the other strip is about an inch and a half. I said inch and three eighths on this one. Whatever it turns out to be is fine. I'm going to have a kerf and that kerf is going to move just a little bit. I know it will. I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm just going to allow for it. Now some guys are skilled enough at this that they put their knee on the board and rip along it and that works out fine for them. Myself, I find it easier to clamp it to a bench. And I take my thumb and I put it against the blade and I draw the blade back. What I want to do is I want to break that edge so that I've got a little flat spot there that's going to catch at least two teeth. Now this is an eighth. This is an eight tooth per inch blade. So if I go a quarter of an inch by drawing it back and get that flat spot, when I start it forward, I'm not going to dig in and it's not going to jump out of the slot. Now on the initial cut, I lean back. I lay the saw so that it's about a 15 degree angle to the surface. That lets me run it back along the line. And remember how I talked about this being five inches wide and it's harder to make it bend because it's got five inches in the slot? Well, by doing this, I'm not all the way through yet but I'm making this thing have a good four and a half, five inches of slot there to work with. It wants to go straight. Then I just let it slowly dip down into the wood. And I track along. Now this initial cut you want to make sure that you're cutting through the wood and that the blade is vertical. You don't want to have it off to one side or the other like this. You want to have it as straight up and down as you can get it. Is it going to be perfect the first time you do it? Nope. I've done this a lot. I've got a lot of practice in. I still make mistakes.
Now, as I'm cutting, I'm watching my marked line on the board. It's running on this side of the blade. I actually like to run it on that side of the blade just because it's easier for me to see. But I can do it this way. It does force me to look straight down the blade. So I'm much more likely to have this blade vertical. Now the other thing people say is this is so slow. We've got a mark there, and we're going to go down here about an inch. We're at our inch mark in three strokes. I'm doing about a third of an inch every time I make a cut. It's actually cutting pretty quickly. Now because I have my vise set up this way, if I kept going, I would be cutting into the side of my vise. Not a good idea. So I'm going to move the board down. Now that I'm away from the end of the board, I'm going to set up my clamp. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a nail down here in the kerf. That holds this board open. Every board wants to move. Sometimes they move out, sometimes they move in. Depends on which way the grain in the wood goes. This way keeps it the it keeps the kerf open so that it doesn't pinch on the back of my blade. Backboard is inch and a half. That's actually very good. I was thinking I was going to be down around an inch and three eighths, but I'm at an inch and a half. And this front board is at inch and seven eighths across the board. Now, because I didn't make my mortise cuts first. I can allow for this two inch board being a little narrow and not have a problem. Now 
as I went back and double checked my measurements, this end is about a sixteenth of an inch wider than that end. So I'm marking this WE for wide end. The extra width doesn't really show up until you get about here. Now I have to make two 16 and a half inch long pieces out of this, so that means 33 inches. If I cut from this end and mark it at 33, I know that I've got about inch and a half of material between the wide end and the part that I'm using. So I can mark this at 16 and a half and make my cut. Now this is my 16 and a half inch side. This is my waist side as far as this board is concerned. I always want to cut on the waist side of the line. Now I could have marked out both of those and then just went ahead and cut them. Sixteen and a half twice comes out to thirty-three. But that wouldn't have allowed for the kerf that the saw took. So I know I want to have it at sixteen and a half. I would have ended up just about a sixteenth of an inch short. Even though this number 12 has a very fine blade on it. It still takes a curve. I have the same process to follow here. I'm going to clean out my bench, make sure I don't have any clutter in the way. Then I'm going to go on into cutting the mortises in the side panels. One of the things I wanted to mention is if you're using a marking gauge, never leave it locked. This beam will expand and contract with changes in humidity and it can crack this block. And just like making sure that I have the block loose on the marking gauge, I run the blade on the, the plane back too so that it's not going to be below the surface. That way I won't be banging into the blade as I put it in the drawer. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.